In this video, we're going to determine the number of real roots using the discriminant, and we're going to identify the values of the roots of a quadratic equation on a graph. So what are roots? Roots of a quadratic, or really any function, are where the parabola or that function intersects the x-axis. So these points where they cross the x-axis are called roots. We also know them by another name. We know them as x-intercepts. We also know them as solutions. We also know them as zeros. So all of those other names mean the exact same thing as roots. And we know how to look for those on a graph. So we have different scenarios, though, when we're dealing with just parabolas. We have the scenario where we have two solutions, where the parabola crosses the x-axis two times. So what could that look like? That could look like this, where the parabola is pointing down, and it has two points where it crosses the x-axis. Or what if the parabola was pointing up? It would still have two points where it crosses the x-axis. What would it look like if we have one solution? Well, the parabola would only cross the x-axis once. So it could look like this. Notice where that point is for the solution. What if the parabola is pointing down? Notice here. So notice when we have one solution that the vertex is the root. The vertex is the one point that hits the x-axis. What about when we have no solution? That means the parabola is not going to cross the x-axis at all. That means that my entire parabola is either above the x-axis or below the x-axis, but it's not going to come back around and ever touch or ever cross. So those are our three scenarios. Either it crosses twice, once, or not at all. Let's look at how we can identify those on the graph next. So we know how to graph parabolas. So let's do that with this parabola, y equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. We know we can get the vertex by finding the axis of symmetry. So negative b over 2a is going to give me the x value of that vertex. Remember, we find the y by plugging it back in. So negative 2 squared plus 4x minus 5. And we're going to get a vertex of negative 2, negative 9. Then when we find those other points on that parabola, we get this parabola. And when we look at the parabola on the graph, we see our vertex at negative 2, 9. But then we also see our points where they cross the x-axis. Notice here that points on the x-axis have a y value of 0. So as you're building that table, you could actually find your roots, solutions, x-intercepts, by finding the points where y is 0. So here's one of your roots at negative 5, 0. Your other root is at 1, 0. So those are your solutions. The way we write those solutions are in a set. So because there are two solutions, we're writing those in those squiggle brackets to indicate that that's a set of values. So the numbers that are in the set of solutions for x are negative 5 and positive 1. Let's take a look at the next parabola. We're going to use negative b over 2a to find the x value of the vertex. So negative of a negative 2 over 2 gives me 1. I take 1 and plug it back in. I'll get 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 1. That gives me a vertex of 1, 0. As I build the table, I look for those roots. Remember, the roots should be where y is 0. Notice we have a root here at 1, 0. What does that look like on the graph? Well, here we only have one solution because the solution is the vertex. It's only hitting the x-axis one time. So how do we write that solution? We write it as x is equal to 1. We only have the one root in the set of solutions. Next, negative x squared. 
so we know this parabola is going to point down, plus 2x minus 3. So I can find the x value of my vertex, plug in to find y, and I get that my vertex is at 1, negative 2. Okay, notice here I'm looking at my table. I don't see any roots, but maybe it's outside of the value. So let's take a look at the graph. Oh, notice here that the parabola actually points downward and doesn't touch the x-axis at all. So this is never going to touch that x-axis, which means we have no real roots. Now, when you get into Algebra 2, you'll talk about imaginary numbers. And so this actually does have roots, but they're imaginary. Number 4, we have y equals x squared minus 10x plus 16. Find the x value of that vertex, which is 5. Build that table to know our vertex is at 5, negative 9. As I build those table of values, I start to notice I have some points where y is equal to 0. So I can see right away I should have an x-intercept at 2, 0, and at 8, 0. Let's check the graph to make sure. It does. It hits the x-axis at 2, 0, and 8, 0. So we know our roots are positive 2 and positive 8. All right, let's take a look at our next parabola. Find that x value of our vertex at 0. If I were to plug in 0 here, I get 0, 9. Build that table. Where are our x-intercepts, roots, solutions going to be? So I have negative 3, 0 and positive 3, 0. And notice that's where my roots are, where it crosses that x-axis. So my solutions are negative 3 and positive 3. All right, let's take a look at this one. Negative b over 2a gives me the x value of my vertex. So take that 1 and plug it in. Negative 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1. That gives me my y value of my vertex at 3. Then build that table. Notice that my y value is 0 in these two places. So I know I have two solutions as I look at the graph. And I do at 0, 0, so this one actually passes through the origin, and 2, 0. So my two solutions are 0 and 2, the x values where y is 0. All right, so we've taken a look at the graph. Now we're going to determine another way to figure out how many solutions we have. We're going to use what's called the discriminant. We actually get that from the coefficients in the equation. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So we're getting the a, b, and c, which are the coefficients in our quadratic equation. So this is the discriminant, this value that we get when we plug those coefficients in. So there's a way to tell how many solutions we have. If d is less than 0, so if it's negative, then there are no real solutions. That means that we're not going to have a parabola that crosses the x-axis. If d is equal to 0, then there are one real solution. If d is larger than 0, so if d is positive, then there are two real solutions. Those are our three scenarios. So now we're going to test and see what the discriminant is in each one of these parabolas, in each one of these quadratic equations, to figure out how many solutions we have. So I need to identify a, b, and c from each parabola first. So a is 1, b is 5, c is 4. So I take b squared minus 4 times a times c and work that out. So I've got 5 squared, which is 25. 4 times 1 times 4 is 16. So 25 minus 16 is 9. 
So is 9 negative, 0, or positive? Because 9 is greater than 0, that means we have two solutions. All right, let's take a look at number 8. We have 1, negative 3, and 10. So negative 3 squared minus 4 times a times c. So positive 9 minus 40 is a negative 31. So because our discriminant is negative, that means there are no real solutions. All right, here, b squared minus 4ac gives us 10 squared, which is 100. 4 times 1 times 25 is also 100. So we get a discriminant of 0. So because the discriminant is 0, we have one solution. Here in number 10, we have b squared minus 4ac. So we have 16 plus 24 equals 40. Because 40 is greater than 0, we have two solutions. Okay, finding that discriminant here, we get a discriminant of 0. Since the discriminant is 0, we have one real solution. In number 12, b squared minus 4ac, we get a discriminant that's negative. That means we have no real solutions, or that parabola will not cross the x-axis.